this thing finally being almost finished. We are still missing the, the fan panels, but that's for after the fact. With the outer shell finally being finished, we can get to building a PC for once. And no, we are not going to use an ASRock motherboard. This is a Gigabyte B550DS3H. This is the very main board that was driving the previous fan machine or fan benchmark machine for like the last two years. And the reason we are going with it is A, we do not need a lot of power to have some sort of number come out of it and B, it was incredibly reliable in the last two years. Like, I have not witnessed even one crash, even one issue, nothing ever malfunctioned in any benchmark for two years. And I cannot say that about the radiator machine or the CPU cooler machine or anything else. Only my fan machine was 100% reliable. And I really hope that this will continue. For the CPU that is going in here, we are going to use a AMD Ryzen 3600X. And yes, this is the very combination we have been using for the last two years. This CPU does not need a lot of power. And again, we do not need it. We do just need some amount of heat going into the Nokia NHP1 that we are going to use and from there it just needs to stay at the same level for the next few years and the 3600X should do just a fine job with that. Then we are going to do something that will infuriate a lot of you. We are going to use a single stick of G-Skill Aegis 3000 16 gig memory. Is it 16 or dual? 8. No, oh, it's 8. 8 gig memory. And the reason we are using only one stick is because we do not need more. I, I have no use in dual channel power. That thing just needs to run. So uh, that's just fine. And then for the SSD we have a random Patriot that I'm going to just quickly slab in here. Now this is theoretically a passive CPU cooler, so no fan on here. You can mount one on the two sides or on the top, but that's not required. But we are going to use it without the fan. And installed in here, we are going to have one intake and one exhaust fan on each side, the same fan preferably, and they will just push air in and then pull it out again. So they are recycling the air over and over and over again. And because this heatsink is so much spread out and because it is designed to use the environment to cool down the CPU, I believe this will deliver the most accurate result that we can somehow acquire. Yeah, that's basically it. Let's install it. Now, before installing it, I need to make sure about a few things. And that is if I am still able to later on screw down all the motherboard hole or the motherboard screws. Once that thing is in, there is no, no going back essentially. Yeah, and I can see that this one here will not be mounted down. Once the Nokia is in, there is no way of getting to this one here. Well, that sucks, but I cannot install the motherboard and then the Nokia because there is no way in hell I will get a screwdriver through it and then mount it down. So this one is just a loss and I can't really do anything about that. Well, this is one hell of a chunky boy. Uh, so let me just quickly do a boot test just to be sure that everything works because I really don't want to install everything in here. Close it down and then realize that, I don't know, the CPU died in the meantime. That's not good. It booted up. Reboot and select proper boot device or inside boot media. Great, it works. Woo. Okay, so now I know that this sucker works. Let's install it inside of this thing and hope that everything mounts down as I intended it to. Okay, this shouldn't be too hard. Everything was planned meticulously. So let's just hope that everything fits in here. But I don't see a reason why it shouldn't. So dip, 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 dip. Ah, perfect. And I remember that I was supposed to screw in every screw, like for one round, let's say, because some of the motherboard spacers are slightly like tilted once they get high enough. I need not to tighten all of the screws until I'm sure that every screw is like attached to a thread. 
Oh, even the one that I thought I couldn't install, I can install by pushing the screwdriver through the spaced out heatsink. And I pushed it through the wrong hole. No, my screwdriver isn't long enough. And similarly to your average case, adding the motherboard adds like so much structural strength to the bottom part. The top is still slightly wobbly until we have mounted down these panels. But the bottom, that's, that's not moving anywhere. So the next step would be to install the power supply. And that one is going in the bottom. However, I very strongly believe that in the very least, my power supply cable will not be long enough, so I'm just going to use this Asia horse, Asian horse, Asia horse, um, violet ones, because they were the first ones that I took out of the box, and I don't really need them, so they will do just, so it will do just fine in here. For the CPU power, I think I have enough, but uh, we will we will see that in a minute once everything is mounted down. So let's mount the power supply to this bracket. The word you are looking for is beautiful. This power supply is mounted beautifully to this bracket. And all of the cables should come out in the very back of the case. And this is not going to be easy with my hands. This is not going to be easy at all. Uh, and now let's permanently mount this one down to the case. Or permanently, just mount it down. Now the CPU cable is quite easy. That one is really close to where the hole is. But the power supply, that's... Oh, the, the 24 pin. That one is going to be tricky. I need to somehow fiddle this one in between the Noxia cooler and the case. Mm -hmm. Is it all the way in? No, it is not. Yeah. Now it is all the way in. Great. Okay, from here, well, cable management will be quite short. Just smash everything back into the bottom compartment. Leaving me with the minimum amount of cabling. Look at that cable management. Does the job. And here we have the power button. And now the last step would be to install the GPU. This Sapphire Radeon RX 6400. Yeah, 6400. Where I just need to remember to remove that plastic on top of the cooler. But before we install this one, let's also already install this behemoth here, which will, in a minute, keep the GPU in place. Doop, doop, doop. GPU in. Now that one alpha cool screw that has an incredibly fine thread. Great! Uh, actually, the PC is kind of finished now. This hole here is for like USB and HDMI, which I can pre-connect right now. There just isn't like any big point in doing so. Yeah, let's pre-connect one. Dip, 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 dip. I have this like uh, two meter, I believe, USB extender, which is perfect for this use case. So I'll just connect that to any random uh, USB port. And this is the first best HDMI cable that I found. Which is definitely going in there. You are going. I told you, it is going in there. Well, I might need a 90 degree HDMI adapter. Yeah, this makes stuff a lot easier. And that way I can just connect it like that. And... That way we got HDMI out or in, we got the USB that I can connect to whatever the hell I want 
and the only thing that I might need for a minute is RJ45, so just regular network, but I can also straight up connect it like from this side here, so looks fine. I think the machine is ready. And I think I'm going to leave it for here. In the meantime, in between the next episode, I will install Windows, prepare the machine for benchmarks and stuff. And in the next episode, we will create these fan panels, uh, which means nothing else but just cut like very round holes in it using the Dremel. That's basically it. Uh, one for 120s, one for 140s. And from there, I will just keep a bunch of panels for bigger fans, 200 mil fans. I could do it in the next episode. However, I don't think I have enough of these. Uh, I have no idea how, what they are called. They are like hammered in something made out of wood and then they have a thread. In total, I have like... Yeah, I have 4, 8, 12, 13. I have 13 of these and I need 8 to create one pair of fans, so 4 on, on each side. So I can create one for 120mm fan. So maybe we will do that in the next episode. Create it, install it and then see how that thing performs. But uh, for today, I think this is going to be it. The machine works. I will now get to install Windows and then we will see next time to finish it with the first set of fans. But this turned out pretty cool. And no, I will not spray paint it. I will just leave it like that. For simplicity, this doesn't need to be beautiful. It just needs to work. We finally built something that resembles a PC. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.